It's um, a real privilege to be here, really. It's, I'm not just here on my, as it were, under my own steam today. Uh, you'll be aware, I'm sure, that uh, Martin has mentioned this to you, that he has applied within our union for the rabbinic internship. So um, this is some good news. And that, of course, um, set off our own process within the union of uh, inducting Martin into the program, which will be starting uh, towards the end of the year and into next year. Um, being a rabbinic intern is a huge responsibility. Ah, oh, tissues, yeah, we're going to need that. <laughs> I'm going to pour it all over Martin's head. So <laughs> he will be anointed this morning. Um, it's a, an enormous responsibility. And we don't, within the union, just let anyone into the rabbinic intern program. So the fact that Martin has been admitted into that program um, after a careful discussion with him, with the DIN, um, discussion really about Martin's qualities and uh, who he is as a person in his calling, it was very obvious to us actually that this is a man who is called of God to fulfill this role. Now I know this... Oh sorry, the DIN, sorry, the Beit DIN. The Beit DIN is, is the call to the rabbis that looks after conversions and also rabbinic uh, ordinations and so on. Um, and you know, we have to be really, really careful, not just with the conversions as to who, who is converted in that sense, but also who becomes a rabbi. Once you become a rabbi, um, you have an enormous amount of authority really within the union and within the movement to teach and preach, um, to set up your own ministries. And I know that you had to Messianic water and living in Torah the thing. Um, as well, so you know, Martin's already moving in, in that direction. Uh, it also means, of course, that we will absolutely back him up in terms of the program and what he's doing here as well. Now, I've known Martin for just what, a couple of years now, three or four years, I don't know how long it is now, but long enough to know him well enough to know that he will be a really, really good rabbi. I've got no doubt about that at all. He's already been tried and tested through various issues and situations that have come and gone and he has shown himself, proven himself to have the qualities that are needed. Now you'd think, I'm, you're probably thinking, oh, I know what the rabbi's going to talk about Timothy and Titus and Peter and the qualities of leadership. I'm not, actually. You know those ones and they're really obvious. I'm going to go for something else, just very briefly, so bear with me. It comes from Ezekiel. Ezekiel 34. And Ezekiel is describing as he's talking to Israel, the, the qualities of bad leaders. Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat and clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the flock. The weak you have not strengthened, nor have you healed those who were sick, nor bowed up the broken, nor brought back what was driven away, nor sought what was lost, but with force and cruelty you have ruled them, and so the sheep were scattered, and they became food for all the beasts of the field. It's an interesting little passage, it's equal 34. If you've not read it recently, I'd recommend you do it. It's a really fascinating chapter describing, of course, um, the wayward kings and priests of Israel in Ezekiel's day, but it's just as pertinent for us today as well. Because if we turn this on its head, we get a really interesting description of this man that you see before you today. The shepherd of Israel who feeds the flocks and not himself. That is true. He's a selfless man of God. He works long hours. You know this, but I'm going to say it because it doesn't often get said and it maybe needs to be said. He works long hours for you in terms of preparing the sermons every week, in terms of preparing the worship every week, in terms of preparing the gateway class which he's teaching with you right now. I know the hours he puts in, that when he gets up early in the morning to do it, or late at night when he's doing it, I know this. <laughs> and he doesn't expect to be clapped for it, it's lovely to hear it. <laughs> But he, I know he doesn't, but I mean, it's good for once for Martin to hear it, because it's not often that people appreciate it in that way. Because for most people, you just think it's normal. And on one level it is, because it should be normal. But the good shepherds of Israel do this because they serve Adonai. 
wholeheartedly and feed the flock and not themselves. Now Martin is not here sinking the funds into his own wallet and bank account because he wants to be rich <laughs> like the bad shepherds. Again, we continue in all of this. He says, the weak you've not strengthened, turn it on its head. The weak he has strengthened. He does. I know he does. When there's people here who have problems or issues, what does he do? He's with you, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He sits with you, talks to you, prays with you, gets you back on your feet again, gets you moving forward again. The weak he strengthens. He healed those who were sick. Yes, you do. He prays with you, doesn't he? When you're sick, when you need healing, he's there for you to make sure that the Lord is in that situation with you. He binds up the broken hearted. Yeah, this is what this man does. When you're suffering from grief or trauma or death in the family or something that's happened that's left you mentally, emotionally, spiritually scarred. Where, where is this man? He's right there next to you, isn't he? Because that's what a good shepherd of Israel does. He brings back what was driven away. Yeah. What did Yeshua teach? Then he said about you know, going and get the one lost sheep, the 99. He puts in a Quran, they're safe, and off we go, we'll go and get that one lost sheep. That is a real hallmark of spiritual, biblical, Jewish leadership. It's to actually fetch what was lost and bring it back. This is what this man does. He has a heart for that, to see everything restored in the way it should be restored. That is a rabbinic quality which you have in you, Martin. He then goes on to, to seek what was lost, which you're doing. He says, the bad leaders with force and cruelty, they rule Israel. Turn it on its head. This man does not rule with force and cruelty. I've not seen him act with force and cruelty. Have you? I doubt it. What I see in Martin is just the opposite. What Martin does is to lead by example from the front and he hopes and prays that you are following on behind. You know what's a real blessing actually? I'm going to say this right now. Because when I was here in May, there were, shall we say, slightly fewer tummies in the Q-pop than there are today. <laughs> now I know that's not a major, major thing. But I know this man isn't there kicking your door and saying, you will put this on. You will wear, you know. I'd be very surprised that he's doing this. What he would do is to try and teach you and instruct you. And he will do this week after week. And eventually you'll look and you'll see and you'll understand and you'll get it. And eventually you put on, that is one example, there are many others. A good leader leads by example and leads with the qualities of Mashiach in this way that the people will naturally follow. The scriptures say it's the Gentiles who rule over people. Do not rule in that way. It's not about a harsh rulership. You know, at the end of the day, God has given us free will and Martin can do nothing to stop you making your choices. It's true. If you decide tomorrow that you no longer want to be in this congregation, there is nothing Martin can do to stop you from leaving. Each and every one of you is here now because you chose to come down those stairs. You chose. And he wasn't forcing you to come in the building this morning. You want to be here. You chose to be here. That's the way it should be. When you have a community that is freely choosing to follow the shepherd at the front, you have a healthy, spiritual, functioning community. I want to encourage you to pray for this man because standing here is never easy. I know he makes it look easy. We all tend to make it look easy. But it really, really isn't. There's an enormous responsibility comes with it and I know that Martin feels it because I, I, we talk and I know he wants to often head for the hills and, and, and just, you know, it's too much. It is, it's too much. Especially at moments like, like now, it's too much. But God calls people to be shepherds of the flock and he calls and he gives gifts to those he calls. And I see that in this man. No, he's never been kicking our door and me, 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 look at me, look at me, look at me. He's never done this. From the moment I first met him, it has all been about how I can serve the people in water. How can I lead them? How can I take them further? Let's minister to these people here. Not a mention for himself. And literally from day one, for me, that marked him out as being the one that God had called. That's really the reason, ultimately, that I'm here today as well. Because I want you to see, on behalf of the union, that we are anointing Martin with oil today 
to inaugurate him into this rabbinic intern program. So will you stand and we will pray for Martin right now. Thank you. Vina Malakain, Lord God, our Father, we want to consecrate this man to you right now. Father, I thank you for his courage to respond to your call, to apply for this program, knowing that he felt vulnerable and weak and inadequate in the face of the qualities needed, Lord God, but still trusting in you, Lord, he stepped up and applied. And Lord, I know that I can see in him, I know that you can see in him the qualities that you're going to build into him. How you're going to help him to grow spiritually, to become this pillar, a man of God that he's already becoming in this community. Lord, we anoint him right now in Yeshua, as you claim his name, that you will set him apart for this service. Lord, I pray that you will go ahead for him, to teach him, to train him, Lord. It's not just about the talk sessions. It's the day-to-day -day preaching and building, Lord, which will mould him and frame him and make him into this rabbi that you want to be, this man of God that you want him to be. Father, I know that this title doesn't mean anything to him in that way, Lord. It shouldn't mean anything to him. Lord, it's a title by name only. It's a piece of paper, Lord. What counts is the spiritual qualities you're building into this man that makes him a shepherd of Israel, that makes him that man of God called for this service. And I pray, Lord God, you will make him that man. Teach him and train him, mould him, break him, Lord, when you need to break him. Lord, I pray that you will bind up his heart when it's broken. Show him the path and the way that he is to walk. Strengthen him and Arena together in their calling together, Lord, in this. And bless this community, that it will go on to be a powerful, shining light to the Jewish community of Malta. I thank you, Lord God, they're already <laughs> provoking the Jewish community here to come back to life, to step up, and to have a profile. They're already provoking the community. And I pray, Lord God, that you will continue that provocation unto salvation, Lord, I pray. And help Martin in his weakness. In his frailty as a human being, Lord, I pray that you will make up for every deficit in him with the power of your Ruach in his life. That he will lean on you and lean on your power, lean on your presence and know your calling in his life and see you do miracles that we've only just begun to dare believe that you could do. That he will see those miracles in this community and beyond as a sign to Israel that Mashiach lives Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you all. I know. You're behind me in this, and, and, and I cannot do it without your support. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>